darkness in the middle of the night. I'm praying for assurance, everything's gonna be all right. And Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able, and I'll go down in defeat. And he said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you at how far you've come. Only every time you ask me, didn't I delete?
Amen. That was a that was a good gang. Amen. Good singing. Good singing. Amen. I have a piece of paper in my possession. It says May 13th, 1970, in Laura's Hospital, I was born. Now, I wouldn't want to pin my life on that because I have seen birth certificates be wrong before. Somebody recorded a wrong date. They recorded the name wrong and all that. So I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to uh, put my life at stake. Do you, well, could you prove that to be absolutely true? Because I just don't know. I believe it to be true, but I don't know if it is true or not exactly. A amen. I celebrate that every, every year regardless. But I want you to know that there was a second birth that come into my life. Amen. January 14, 2001, about 6.30 in the afternoon. Amen. God came by and wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hey, the old man died and I was born again. Amen. Is this on? It didn't sound like it. Amen. But it is now, right? A amen. I was born again and I had a, a birth I can't remember is what I was trying to say. And one I can't forget, amen. You know what? I can't get past Calvary. I can't get over it. I, I, I'll never get used to it. Brother Lee, I don't know why God would save somebody like me, but I know he can and he's able to save. And the Bible tells me to the uttermost, amen. Uh, he can save to the uttermost. No matter where you're at tonight in your life, God can help you, he can deliver you, and he can save you uh, from your sin. Uh, what a greatest thing that God would save us. Who art man, that thou art mindful of him. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 tonight. Hebrews chapter 1 tonight. I want to read uh, this whole chapter. It's only 14 verses. But I just want to read it. And uh, I was telling some of them that I've uh, uh, been studying. And I got so deep that I was, I was drowning and even over my head. So I said I had to come back up to the surface for air. And so tonight we're just going to talk about just a few things right here in this chapter. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 and beginning in verse number 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. In other words, God at different times and different ways would speak to man through the prophets. Amen. Verse 2. God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ. And he still speaks today. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. Amen. Uh, God put Jesus Christ over everything. But Jesus Christ is the one who made Everything, Amen. Let's keep on reading. Verse number three. Who being in the brightness of his glory, look at this, and the express image of his person, and beholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, listen to what he did, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Amen. Hey, God, Jesus Christ was the express image. If you don't know what that is, that's kind of like in our day or maybe in our days 30 years ago would be a Polaroid picture. Amen. Uh, it's exactly, he is exactly the image of God. Amen. In, on this earth. And uh, he is set down on the right hand of majesty. Verse 4. Being made much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. I'm going to read the rest of it, but I want us to know that uh, he's writing to the Hebrews because they had these uh, 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 statues and stuff uh, that would be um, um, uh, made into uh, angels, and, uh, and they would even worship these things, and, and they would worship and say, let's worship angels. And so he's writing this, and in verse 5 he says, For unto which of the angels he said at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will... Be, him, uh, be to him a father, and he shall be unto me a son. He said, he, God ain't never said that to an angel. Amen. Verse 6, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let them all the angels of God 
worship him. Amen. Hey, tonight I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and give my title. I know we ain't done reading, but I want to give my title. I want to talk about the express image and angels. Amen. The express image and angels. Amen. Let's get us a title page right up here right now. The express image and angels. Amen. And let's keep on reading because I want us to have that thought in our mind as I finish reading this. Amen. The express image and angels. Angels, Amen. And let's look on down in verse number seven. And of angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a sepulchre of righteousness. Is in, uh, is the sepulchre of the kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above the fellows, above thy fellows, verse 10. And thou, O Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. And they shall perish, but thou remnant, and they all shall wax old as doeth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. Thy God and, and thy years shall not fail. Verse 13, but to which of the angels saith he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thee thine enemies thy footstool. But thou art all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them, who shall be heirs of salvation. Amen. What God was trying to tell us right here in this first chapter, to make it simple, because y'all know I'm simple, right? Hey, what God was saying is God used to speak through a, a, a prophet, but now God's speaking to his son, but his son is not an angel. He's not close to an angel. He's better than the angels. The angels minister unto him, but the angels also will minister unto us. But God, the God, his son, Jesus Christ, will also minister unto us. But he wanted to make sure there was a clear difference between the express image of God, Jesus Christ, and angels. Amen. And that's what we want to preach with the Lord's help. Father, we love you and we thank you, Lord, uh, for your word. And we ask you to help us now, encourage us in your word to know that you're with us. And God, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And God, tonight, if we're lost, uh, you said there's joy in the presence of angels, God, uh, over one sinner that repenteth. And tonight, we just thank you, Lord, for salvation. And Lord, we thank you for your help in ministering spirits in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 The angel of the Lord. Now, you can read that all the way through the Old Testament. You can read this, uh, those words put together, the angel of the Lord. And you will see right there when you read that through the Old Testament, uh, y'all know y'all read that a bunch, haven't you? When I said angel of the Lord, you think of a lot of scriptures that it's in. But the Lord's always L-O-R-D capitalized, amen, which means Jehovah, amen, is what that means. If you would, if you would look at the original word, which is clearly God. Amen. The angel of the Lord is clearly God. It's Jehovah God. It's a, a God, um, um, uh, uh, I am that I am is the way you can break that down. Amen. If you want to know the true name of God, amen, it's the Jehovah God, I am that I am is his name. Amen. Whatever you need him to be tonight, that's what he is tonight for you. If you need salvation, he is a savior tonight. If you need help, he is one that can succor you tonight. Amen. If you need healing, he is a great physician tonight. He is God Almighty. Amen. So the angel of the Lord, when you see that, that word Lord means Yahweh, but that word angel means messenger. It means a messenger of God. Uh, uh, God had messengers and they were angels. But sometimes when you read the angel of the Lord, it was an angel of God. Amen. God would send an angel. We know a lot of angels' names, at least how many, Brother Danny? Okay, we know at least four angels' names in the Bible that we, we know their name, amen? 
Hey, but angels would, would, God would use them to send a message. He would use them to speak to his people as well. And he would just use angels. Amen. But sometimes in the Old Testament, when you would see the angel of the Lord, you'd have to just put a capital A on that angel as well because it would, what it would mean would be a, a, a theopoly or a, a Christopathy or a pre-incarnate Christ is what that would be. Amen. It would be Jesus Christ himself that would come and take on the farm and uh, the Bible would record it as an angel but it would probably be some kind of form of a man he would come and he would take that form and he would speak to mankind a amen and uh, do y'all know that because it's kind of quiet I feel like I'm the only one in here amen <laughs> Amen. So Jesus Christ would come in a, in a, a, a it's hard to understand, I know. Uh, some people say, well, don't that take away from his birth? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. No, we're going to get to that. Amen. Uh, 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 but they were uh, angels, and then they were pre-incarnate Christ. And pre-incarnate meant uh, something that's not been born yet. Car carnal is man, uh, uh, born flesh and bone and blood. Uh, but pre is, of course, before. And that's what it would be. And uh, we could see that. In the Bible, Amen. Now, uh, angels are not that that pre-incarnate Christ. There's a difference, and if you really study it out, you'll see the difference, and you'll be able to tell when it was Jesus that come to them uh, in in some form that they could see and understand. Uh, uh, but not just a regular angel. It would be Jesus because uh, they would fall down and worship that angel, and that angel would receive worship. But the Bible clearly teaches us that angels. Uh, that that are that are still with God, that not the fallen angels that's with the devil, uh, but but angels that's with God will not accept worship. Amen. They know who deserves all the worship, and it's God. And you can read that in the Bible. Now I got us a lot of scripture tonight. I'm gonna give it to us. A Revelation 22 verse 8 and 9 tells us uh, clearly. Clearly, and I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down and worshiped before the feet of an angel, uh, of the angel which showed me these things. Amen. John's over there, he's getting visions, an angel showing him things, and John don't know what else to do but fall down and worship him. Amen. And here's what the angel said unto him. Hey, and he saith unto me, See if thou do not, for I am a fellow servant and a brethren of the prophets and of them which pick the say, Hey, Worship God is what he would say. Amen. Clearly shows us angels are not seeking worship. They know we need to worship God. Amen. There's angels all around us tonight. Amen. There's angels all around us tonight. You better treat people nice. There's angels all around us. Hebrews would tell us clearly. Hebrews tells us clearly that there's angels. Hebrews 13 and 2. Here's what the Bible says now. Uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Let me drop, let me, can I stop right there and just pause and we'll get back to the sermon. We've got the college coming. They, they, we, we, we're getting all the things uh, together on it. Everything hitting settled yet, but they're coming to be with us in June. And they may need, these are college kids coming in, and they may, may need a place to stay. So if you've got room in your house, you better make sure you say, Preacher, one or two of them or five of them can stay with me. Amen? Because I'm going to be asking some of you now. Okay? Let's get back on the sermon. Hey, be not forget to entertain strangers. There it is. Hey, for, here, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. You know, I wonder if we've ever talked to an angel. Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever talked to an angel? Hey, I, I've talked to some people that seem like angels. I talked to some people seem like devils, but I've talked to some people that seem like angels. Amen. Their spirit was good and everything about them just made me smile. Yeah, I felt like there were some angels in here the day when I come in early, amen, and heard the singing going on around here and the practicing and the smiles and the and the joy that was just in this place. Amen. And, and be careful because we might entertain angels and don't even know it, is what the Bible says. Angels are spiritual beings. Man is flesh and blood. Angels are powerful. Man is weak. Angels are a creation of God. And man was made a little bit lower than the angels. Psalms 8, verse 4 and 5. So we were made, uh, here's what it says. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited him? Verse 5 would tell us, for thou hast made him a little lower 
than the angels. Amen. Hey, he made us a little lower than angels, and he made Jesus a little lower than angels when Jesus was born of Mary. Amen. And so, so, but we just read that he's higher than the angels, but he was made lower than the angels when he was born. A amen. Hey, look, but I also will say that we're weak, and they're strong, and, and they're a creation of God, and we're a creation of God, but they also desire to look into some things that we can enjoy that they cannot. A amen. The Bible tells us in um, um, 1 Peter 1 and, and verse 12 that the angels desire to look at. When we're taught, here's what, here's what if you, we ain't got time, but if you had time to study those few verses, take it in context. When you and I share the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people and we tell them how they can be saved, it says that angels are desiring to look into that. Angels don't need to be redeemed. Amen. Fallen angels cannot be redeemed. Rebellious angels will never be redeemed. But a rebellious person can be redeemed. And when we talk about that, it says the angels will look down and just desire to check us out and listen to what we're saying. Oh, you know what they say? We're going to sing a new song in heaven that the angels cannot sing and I believe that song is I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed the angels will just they desire to see what we say when we talk about what Jesus Christ done for us, amen hey, hey it says in Hebrews uh, 2 here in verse number 16 it says that that for verily who took not on him the nature of angels, but took on him the seed of Abraham. <laughs> Jesus Christ, when he came, he didn't take on the, the form, even though he was a, ain't called an angel in the Old Testament, but he took on the form of a man. When he come here, he didn't come in the form of an angel. He come in the form of a man. Amen. He was born of man. He called himself more than anything else, the son of man. Amen. Has came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. The angels can take on the form of a man as we read in the Old Testament. They can take on that form, but they can never become man. Amen. Don't ever think that they can become man. I know there's scriptures that we've, we've uh, in our uh, debates that we've talked about. And we Not really debates, we just discussed. We got some deep stuff we discussed, don't we? A amen. And, and that's one of them about where... Uh, the sons of God and the, and the daughters of men. Amen. Angels uh, can take on the form of man but can never become man according to the word of God. A amen. And so when we look here, uh, angels can take on the form of a man and, and demonic angels, uh, devils, can possess man but they cannot become man. Man is a creation of God that angels cannot come. So what I want to talk about tonight, amen, that was just a setup. What I want to talk about is get right here into the Word, and I want to just to go through the Bible real quick like tonight, and I, and I just want to say, hey, the express image and angels has always been there to help us, amen. Jesus Christ came to save us, and angels is always sent to watch over us, amen, and to keep us safe. Here, here's what the Bible teaches us in Daniel 3 and verse 25, amen, it tells us that the angels, amen, whether, whether you want to look at angels as, as a Christ, a pre-incarnate Christ, or just an angel from God, because I'm going to bring up both of them, but I'm saying God will have us, and right here it says, uh, uh, the, uh, and he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose and walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the first, uh, forth is like the son of God. Amen. I want to say tonight that these, these express image and the angels of God walks with us. Amen. They walk with us through the fire. Amen is what we read right there. They walk with us through the fire. If you will go on over and you're reading Daniel chapter 6 and verse 22 uh, 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 Daniel was thrown into the uh, uh, den of lions. Amen. The, the, the den of lions and he was thrown in there and, and the king come back the next morning about to weep and cry and said oh Daniel, oh Daniel Daniel, has your God delivered you? And Daniel said, O king, live forever, for the Lord has sent an angel. Amen. Look at what it says. My God has sent an angel and shut the mouth of the lion. Amen. What I'm trying to say is he walks with us through the fire. Amen. He walks with us through the den of lions. 
Amen. 66, uh, Psalm 66 and verse 12, it says that he was been through us, uh, 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 through, the, through the fire there. Look at it. He went with us through the fire and through the water. Amen. You can go on back and you can look at it. He walks with us through the fire and he walks with us through the water. Exodus 14 and 12. I'm talking about God walking with us now. Hey, Exodus 14 and verse number 19. You can see that uh, uh, not only is he walks with us, amen, but he's walking in front of us and he's walking behind us. Amen. He's all around us. He's walking with us. He's walking with us. Amen. Amen. Be careful where you're walking at. God's walking with you. Amen. Amen. Hey, he's walking with us. And no matter what you're going through in your life, he'll walk with you. Now, you may be facing the storm, but he'll come walking on that thing to you. Amen. Hey, whatever's over your head is still under his feet. Amen. He is a water walker tonight. Amen. And he can walk. Amen. You ever have one of them days when you feel like God's just right there beside you? I, li I, like it. I, like to, I like to talk about it like the old song. It's going to be a walk on water kind of day. You ever heard that song? Amen. I like it. Amen. I, some days I have just a walk on water kind of day. Amen. I feel like God's right there with me. Everything's going good. Everything's all right. And you know what? You can have days like that. But you have days that you are uh, on the mountaintop experience, you will. Hey, the, the wind and the waves are rolling, but you're walking on top of them. And that's great. Amen. Just knowing God is with us and he walks with us. And I also seen in the Bible that he stands with us. Amen. He walks with us and he stands with us. Acts 27 and 22 Hey, there was a storm come up. Paul was on that ship, and the storm was coming up, and everybody thought they would surely die on that boat. And here's what Paul would say. Paul would say, um, I now, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. What does he say next? Give me, give me verse 23, because it's somewhere in there. I know I didn't give it to you, but it's somewhere. For there stood by me this night. Huh? Huh? An angel of God. Amen. Hey, look, now you think Paul believes he, believe, he belongs to an angel, uh, a regular angel, a Michael angel, a Gabriel angel? No, he said, whose I am and whom I serve. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, hey, hey, the angel of God's, hey, if it's Christ or if it's an angel, whoever God sends, he'll walk with us and he'll stand with us. Amen. He'll stand with us through the storms. Amen. He'll stand with us. God's always with us. Sometimes we don't know how we're going to win. But God's all, if God's with you, hey, look, hey, look, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, one man and God is the majority, amen. I know God's the majority all by itself, but I'm just talking about God being with us, amen. Hey, one man with God is the majority, and God stands with us. You can go and you can go in Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, and you can see about Elisha there. And Elisha, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, he he might have been just sitting there peeling him a pear or an apple or something, and just eating and just, I, I see him relaxing and taking it easy. And his servant went outside that morning and, and looked up, and the whole place that, where they lived at was surrounded by, by uh, 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 um, armies and, and men and chariots and all. And he'd run back in and he told Elijah, he said, hey, we're surrounded, we're surrounded, we're surrounded. There's more of them than there is with us. Oh, we're doomed. Ain't no way we, hey, we ain't going to live through this. And, and Elijah just sitting there peeling it. I just see him peeling his apple or whatever. Y'all can see him anyway, won't do. And he looked over there and said, God, open his eyes and let him see. He said, the servant run back outside. He said, and there was angel armies all around there, amen. And they just wasn't on chariots. Their chariots was on fire, amen. And it was more of them. And, and with them. what I'm trying to say is God will stand with us, amen. He'll walk with us, and he'll stand with us. Here's what Revelation says in, in the seventh chapter, verse number one. It said there was four angels that could stand on the four corners of the earth, and they're holding the four winds of the earth. Amen. I'm talking about angels standing with us. Don't that make you feel good? Hey, Revelation 10 and verse 8 says that their angel, he can put his one foot on the sea, and he can put one foot on the land, and he can stand right there, and he's going to help us. Amen. I'm talking about God. He's got angels that walks with us. 
and that stands with us. And I also see that they'll come by and they'll sit down and sit with us. They'll come by and they'll sit with us. And, they'll, and I, I was amazed that when they sit with us, it's always to convince us that God is with us. You could take it to the first place in the Bible, Judges chapter 6, verse number 11. And it's the story about Gideon that we all know. Amen. And it says that there was a, a, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years. That's, that's verse number 1. Is that what I wrote down? Thank you. And there came, hey, look, thank you for that, though. They could be evil going on all around us. But God can send an angel down, Sister Lacey, and just sit down right beside you and Brother Cody. And look what it says. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak tree, which was of Orpah. And he began to talk to Gideon and what he did. And here's what he would tell to Gideon. I don't know which verse it is. Maybe the next verse. Maybe verse 12, Brother Norm. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. He said, the Lord is with thee. The Lord is with thee. I came by to tell you that the Lord's with you. I don't, I don't know why we ain't shouting tonight. Because I know I'm not the only one that sometimes feel like I'm right by myself. I know I'm not the only one I feel like, you know, God, I know you love me and I know you saved me, but God, right now I'm by myself. I'm doing this all alone. Why has thou forsaken me? But I'm here to tell us tonight, God said, I'll send an angel to sit down right there by you and say, hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, he'll sit down with us, amen, and he'll try to convince us, the angel, that God is with us, amen. Matthew 28, verse 2, tells us about that angel there, rolled away that stone, and you know what he did? He got up there and sat on that thing, amen. He got up there and sat on that thing, waiting on somebody to come by to say, look, whom thou seekest ain't here no more, amen. He's there to convince us, amen, that God is with us and God is raised from the dead. You read John chapter 20, verse number 12. He said when they did go into that tomb, there was two angels in there. And one of them was sitting at the head and some was, one was sitting at the feet where Jesus was laying. But it wasn't no more, amen. They was there just to convince them that God is with us. He is raised from the dead and he is mighty to save us, amen. He is mighty to save us. Here he goes. He, hey, the angels in the express image of God walks with us, stands with us sits with us to convince us that God is with us. And in Luke chapter 16 and verse number 22 it tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus would die and the Bible clearly tells us that the angels came carried him to Abraham's bosom. Isn't it good to know God will send angels by to walk with us? Huh? He'll send them by to stand with us when trouble comes our way. And he'll send them, send them by just to sit around to convince us that he's with us. And one day, hallelujah, red letters in our Bibles, they're going to carry us on over there. I know it's not Bible, but it's so true. I know it to be true. But in times that we feel like we're all alone, and we're walking alone through life, and we believe in God and we know God is real, and, but we feel alone. And we look back, there's only one set of footprints in the sand. And we say, God, why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? I always remember what the, what the poem said. He said, I didn't leave you. I was carrying you. Amen. He's going to carry us all the way to that place of perfect peace and rest if we'll trust in him. He's going to carry us on. 
He's going to carry his own. Brother Thomas, you think tonight you can come? Brother Thomas, Lily, come and get us a song of invitation tonight, Brother Thomas, if you will. God's with us. Amen. He's with us tonight. Whether it be Jesus as an angel or for whether it's just an angel that God sends. Huh? Hey, no man could contend with an angel. An angel can kill thousands of men. Don't think God's going to send nobody to you weak. He's going he's to walk with you. He's going to stand with you. He'll sit around with you. and He's going to carry us all the way into the promised land. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. As he sings this song tonight, and we stand all over the house of the Lord if you need to come and talk to him. Thank you, Jesus. If you need to come tonight, as he sings this song.
how many of us tonight know that he's carried us more than once. Amen. He said, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. Take my burden upon you. His burden is light. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. This is a good-looking crowd on Sunday night. We're so glad God's put us together. Amen. I'm thankful for Evergreen Free Will Baptist Church. I am. I'm thankful. Thank you to everyone that's here. And uh, glad God's put us together. Let's remember tomorrow night we're going over there to Mount Ariel uh, to revival. Choir's going to sing. If you're not in the choir and you've been praying about joining the choir but you don't know, uh, why don't you come and help them sing in revival and see how it feels. Amen. And uh, it might be right your spot to be if to come. So that Mount Ariel is on Highway 319. I'm sure everybody knows where that's at. And let's uh, be there tomorrow night. The service starts at 7, and our director says be there at least 15 minutes to them at 645. Please come up early as you can so we can practice a little bit. All right, any other announcements? Amen. They're going to practice a little bit tonight. There's your chance to get up there and practice some with them. Amen. That's all of our men and women. Uh, come on in. We got a youth choir too, so if you're a young person and you want to sing in a choir, we've got a choir for you to sing in. Amen. All right. Any other announcements? Amen. No other announcements tonight. Choir can come on up. We'll ask Brother David Roberts. We're so good to see him tonight. Amen. Sister Joanne loved him so much. And I'm going to ask him to say a dismissal prayer, and the choir can come on up. Brother David. 